fitness and wellness expert, naturopath, and adventure enthusiast, Wendy Peck. And my husband, Todd Isburner. He's a fundraising guru, men's mentor, and Bible scholar. And as a couple, we're going to share riveting breakthrough stories from our guests who've experienced the meaning of a changed life. Our hope is that you will be inspired, equipped, and entertained along your own life journey. So lean in, listen well. This could be your biggest breakthrough. And welcome to another episode of Your Biggest Breakthrough. I'm Wendy Pett. I'm Todd Isburner. And yes, yeah, we're so and glad we're, you're here. <laughs> we're very happy you're here. Hey, Wendy, I've got something to share with you first what? before we're going to get into bringing our special guest in, okay? Okay. It's kind of a surprise. Oh. I've been holding out on this for a while. I love I really surprises. Have. You ready for this? I wanted yeah. to do it in front of everybody because then anyway, they'd know how much I love you. Oh, that's so sweet. <laughs> I bought you a brand new car. What do you mean? I did. I got you the Mercedes Benz you always Shut wanted. Up. You did yes. not. Yes. No. You listen. Did not. I did. You know why? <laughs> uh, why? Because you deserve it. Well, I do deserve and it. You've worked really hard on this That's podcast true. and on your coaching. And I just, I felt it was time you were rewarded Gosh. with something special. You're so full of baloney. But no, did no, you, no, no, no. Did like, you really? No, yeah, I did. And so, Okay, that's but here's, amazing. All right, so here's no, I, I want to see it. What, what here's, color is it? Well, here's another here's another surprise. <laughs> what? I'm just kidding about the whole thing. See, why did you do that? Because, I knew it. I knew it. All right, here's the deal. See, I thought that that's if not I could nice. look, sometimes I think if I could buy her loyalty, then uh, maybe she'd be easier to control. Oh, you can forget that. <laughs> I know that's terrible, but uh, honestly, I'm just kind of making a point, uh, sort of setting up our show today because the reality is it's so easy to be deceived mm -hmm. and it's pretty easy to deceive. Yeah. And of course, uh, that always ends up bad, uh, especially when you stay in denial about it or you rationalize your way through it and you you ignore the fact that there are going to be consequences. Yes. So, And the consequence I'm, for you? Boom. Yeah, boom. And Bam, then, you're out of here. All right, so Bill Scott is our guest today, and he's going to talk to us about what happens uh, when we've been deceived, basically yeah. blinded by Satan, and uh, how we end up paying a, a price bigger than we thought. And then the really good news is uh, Bill's going to share with us uh, just the journey to restoration and the outcome of, uh, of dealing with those things in the way that God would have us deal with it. So Really glad about this. Yeah, I'm so excited. And to give you a little snippet about Bill Scott, he has been in fundraising for 35 years with nonprofit organizations, having hosted, consulted, and coached over 500 fundraisers in virtually every state in the U.S., plus internationally in the U.K., New Zealand, Australia, Canada, Egypt, having generated over $250 million in revenue. Yes, go Bill Scott. Over uh, his 37-year in career in radio, Bill has been involved participating in and launching successful media ministries such as Dawson McAllister Live, as well as running his own syndicated radio ministry, Z Jam Youth Ministries. Bill is also a certified life coach in the area of leadership, executive, and stress management coaching, and he has written three books, The Rock Your World Devotional for Teenagers, Red Tears, a book about self harm and the day Satan called. So we are so excited. That's a little bit about Bill and we want to welcome him right now to your biggest breakthrough. Come on in, Bill. Hey, Bill. I sort of feel like I should get a raise after hearing all that. <laughs> I think I should get a raise just after reading all that. Wow, that's a, that's amazing. Hey, I want to I want to underscore the two hundred fifty million dollars in revenue is uh, is being used by ministries to share the gospel and to disciple believers, and I think that's the really cool part. That's a big number, but that's the cool part, Bill. Huh? Your heart has been in that for so many years, and. Uh, Jeez, that many years? How old are you, anyhow? <laughs> no, I know, I know. It's, uh, yeah, yeah. The years are getting uh, there. That's okay. <laughs> That's good. Well, I have to share too. I have known Bill. How many years have we known each other now? It's probably almost around years, almost thirty years. We've we've worked together for quite a few of those years in our fundraising endeavors. Bill was a big part of the Share Media team for many years. And uh, we, we got to know each other. We worked together. We were down out in the trenches together. And, you know, when you're out in the trenches together, you you get raw and real, don't you? Yeah, yeah you like, do. Like you don't hide stuff. <laughs> no. <laughs> so I've got to know Bill. He's got to know me. And we still really like each other. That's the good news. <laughs> oh, man. So, Bill, we want to jump right into this because our listeners, um, you know, this is a, 
your biggest breakthrough is all about sharing stories that reveal and heal. And you have got a story. You have been through a lot. And so we just want to jump right in and let's, let's share um, a little bit about your story if you're willing. And I know you don't yeah. share it too often. So yeah, be more than happy to No, I've not shared it too often. Uh, just been waiting for the right opportunity and for God to open those doors. But yeah, I've always been in uh, Christian ministry almost my whole life since I was 20 years old. And before that, I was a pastor's kid. So, I've so, hey, always... Bill, so as, a, as a pastor's kid, um, is, is that when yeah, you when... first started your journey of faith? And did, did, was it real for you then? Just take us right at the very beginning stage. Yeah, it was real. It was just before dad uh, became a pastor. It was a little later in life for me. I was probably like about 12 or 13, I think, when he became a pastor. Uh, but it was a Christian home, so we always learned about the Lord. Mm -hmm. And uh, I started, I think I was probably in about fifth grade when I gave my life to the Lord. But it's, it was always been real to me and have always followed it and always felt like I had a call, a God in my life to do something in ministry. Uh, didn't think I was going to be a pastor, uh, but it ended up being in Christian radio and, uh, and fundraising, uh, a big part of Christian radio. And back in, I think it was 95 or 96, that's when I went to work for Dawson McAllister. So it turned a little bit more towards working with teenagers, which I always had a heart for. And after a year of working with Dawson on staff, he launched me to start my own ministry, which I did for a decade. I still worked alongside Dawson McAllister, co-host a show, but had my own ministry. And, you know, it's amazing um, I think if Satan can't get you to fall for the big one, it starts with little compromises, hmm. things that really don't seem to matter in the long run. And uh, But the problem is each compromise gets a little bit bigger. It's like one step away from where God has intended you to be. And because it's one step, you don't realize it until you're like miles away. And, and I think when you really... Um, well, you know, I, I can remember, I think it was about 2006, uh, started having a relationship with a lady, just an emotional affair, nothing physical, nothing wrong that was being said other than didn't have any business spending time with her, right? And, uh, and it was all on the phone. Uh, but it, there was that fight back and forth. Shouldn't be. I ah, didn't really say anything bad. Shouldn't be. And I'll never forget, I can tell you the exact time I decided uh, that I was no longer going to fight. Uh, my brother was killed in a car crash, and I remember being at his funeral, and I was at his casket after everybody left. I was saying my final goodbye, and I thought, you know what? What the hell? I'm going to take whatever I want. Life's too short. And there's a difference between fighting and then when you hand yourself over. You know, the Bible talks about how the Lord just hands yourself over to your sins. And I think when you make that decision, and I did make a decision that day, I was going to go get what I wanted. There was no more fight. I mean, I, I just remember that as clear as day. One of the few things I remember uh, about that day, but I left a different person. And I think when you do that, the deception becomes uh, huge. You, know, no, you don't even know what the truth is. Um, Satan had to see me so much, right? I didn't know. Honestly, I didn't know. I think that's um, really a good point, Bill, because you made the choice. Like I did. you, you in that moment said, "You know what? Life's too short." Kind of a thing. What the heck? Yeah. I'm going for it. I'm, I'm just, I'm just doing it. And it was, but it, it, it wasn't because um, you know the temptation was already there. You were already lured in. It's like the the, the frogs in the in the kettle that's that's you know uh, boiling water, and then pretty soon they don't realize that they're being boiled to death. Right? It's the same thing um, with that deception. And so that lure and those little small little conversations led to the next thing, and led to the next thing, which actually finally um, allowed you to say, you know what? It's it's okay. Yeah, it's all good. Yeah. So, Bill, when people get to that, do, when people get to that point, do you think more often than not, uh, it's because of a pain point that they haven't dealt with? And they I mean, like, were you were you mad at God? I mean, something must have transpired there where in your pain, you were able to make that decision. Yeah, well, you know, I don't think, first of all, Satan doesn't try to take you out when you're at your best. <laughs> you right. know, he's a real loser, man. I mean, he will uh, sucker punch you. 
any way that he possibly can. And, you know, as I was going through the emotional affair, I was becoming weaker uh, because I wasn't in the word every day. I wasn't at my top game because I started those little compromises. And for whatever reason, I mean, you know, of course, when somebody dies, that's a tough deal. But I don't I to this day, I, I still don't know exactly what it was with my brother. It might just be where I was at in, in life, but it was more than just a heartbreak. It was very overwhelming. I felt like it destroyed me mm. at that moment. Yeah. And you did mention, too, that you were away from from God's word. Right. And oh, yeah. it's because you already knew that you weren't in a right space with God. So you right. kept getting more and more distant uh, with those choices um, along the way. So, yeah. Well, walk us through what happened. You're at the funeral. You made that decision. Something snaps in your mind. You you justified being able to take action that deep down in your soul you knew probably wasn't right, but you went for it anyhow. Take us, pick yeah, up the story I, from there. I, I went for it at that point. I just didn't care what anybody said, what anybody thought. I mean, I had people pull me aside. My pastor going, what are you doing? And you know what? I didn't care. I determined I was going to go get this. The flesh. And right? yeah, it was just total flesh and rebellion and uh, just being selfish. Mm -hmm. I wanted, and I didn't care how many people I hurt. Now, mm -hmm. I didn't really think about, I don't care how many people I hurt. I just knew this is what I wanted, and I was going to go get what I wanted if there was any way possible. And, and yet you were, was. and yet you were, you were in ministry at that time. So you're <laughs> right. Yeah. So you're giving out the, the truth. How were you dealing with that on the inside of you? It, well, it just, it tears you apart, destroys you. Mm. I mean, there is no peace when you're living in sin at that mm. level. Mm. I mean, you know, one, you know, you're lying on every level. So you're trying to watch what you're doing because you're living a whole thing in secret, not as much as you thought you were, but I thought I was being pretty good at it. Everybody saw it. They knew, you know, you can see where there's smoke, there's fire. And it was absolutely, I was miserable during that time. And I was totally deceived. One thing that always uh, blows my mind, I remember saying this, I don't think I've even told you this, Todd, but I remember talking with, I think it was that girl and, uh, you know, and I think she said, you know, you, this this is not going to be good for you and all that kind of stuff. She really tried to stop it. And I remember saying something, something that came up about my board, right? What you were on, Todd. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. This is how deceived you get. I said, if they don't like it, I'll go get another board. <laughs> now, I never thought that the board would go get another me. <laughs> 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 See how deceived you are. I mean, we laugh because it is right, absolutely right, right, stupid. Right. But I believed it with everything inside of me because I was that deceived because I'd already handed myself over to Satan. So the blinders were on. I'm as blind as can be. And, you know, I, I still think about that every once in a while in the car. And I just laugh thinking, what, what were you smoking? Uh, but it was rebellion is what I was smoking. And I handed myself over to Satan. So... Um, you know, at some point it's, you, you, you've got to pray one, if you know somebody that is in that place, that they have a moment of clarity. That's what I pray that at some point they just, in the midst of all the, the deception and the rebellion, they had that moment of clarity. Although, you know, I, I had plenty of warnings. I remember my mom, God bless her. And she could really hear from God. She was one of those ladies. She walked in my office one day at, uh, at the ministry, which she never came to the ministry hardly ever. Uh, but she walked right in the middle of the day. I looked up and she came to my desk. She goes, stop it. She says, you need to stop this now. God, show me he's going to take everything from you. Wow. Your wow. choice. And, she and how long did this affair go on? Uh, well, it was, the, the affair itself was one night, but the emotional side of it, six, eight months, something like that. Mm -hmm. It was, yeah, probably six months. And, uh, but you know, one night is all it took. And let me tell you, I had a moment of clarity on the drive home. I was like, what have I done? All of a sudden Satan's like, okay, now I'm going to pull the blinders off and I'm going to show you what you just did mm -hmm. because that even causes more pain in your life and more destruction. I'm thinking, what have I done? What do I do? This is going to hurt so many people. And you know, I, I decided, I thought, well, you know what? I'm not going to tell anybody. 
I'm going to repent and see if I can't put it together myself. I don't want to hurt people. And probably mainly me, if I'm being honest, you know, um, and it wasn't for another eight months until it came out. And I think it was just God pulling the rug underneath me going, you know what? You're not getting away with this homeboy. <laughs> and, uh, you know, and I, I was repentant, but it, you know, um, when you sin, payment is required. Not that God doesn't forgive, not that he doesn't restore, but that's just, that's the way it works. You sin, payment is required because, you know, you've, you, you've broken the law, so to speak. And, and Satan makes sure that he's going to heap on that pain. Now, the cool thing is uh, God can heal, but, man, that, that's not an overnight deal. I was sort of hoping this could be passed in about 48 hours and on with life, and it doesn't happen that way. Uh, well, God is a, a good parent. He's a good father, and that's he why is. he punishes, right? Just like we punish our yeah. children because we want them to be on the right track. Oh, and, absolutely. And he loves you enough to, to bring you back, but there's pain in bringing you back because he's going to discipline you. Mm. I want to talk about your mom for a second, because I think that is so key that she was the the voice of reason bringing you warning. Uh, I mean, when mom speaks, that's a, it's a little easier to listen to her. Yeah. Um, well, so I guess my question is, if if there are people that are speaking into your life like that, why is it or how is it that we can still ignore that, even though they're speaking the truth, we consider for a moment, what is it that takes place in us where we still ignore it and go forward, knowing that they might be right? I think it's just you want what you want. You you're, you surrendered to the spirit. It, yeah, it is. And it's just, you know, and I look back at that. I really believe that was my last warning from God. Hmm. That was like, look, I'm going to give you one more chance to back up your brother. Yeah. And I just snubbed him, looked him <laughs> straight in the eye, looked mom straight in the eye, didn't say a word, didn't phase me at all. Although I knew there was truth in it. I could feel it. I was like, man. But I thought, no, nah, I, I know what I want and I'm going for it. And so, you know, I mean, I guess at the end of the day, I got what I deserved uh, because I handed myself over and, uh, you know, and, but yeah, I've, I've thought often, boy, if I could go back one last time to when mom walked in my office and just said, you know what, you're right. And it stops today. So and talk, to, difference. talk to those people who are, um, uh, they, they have someone they're very concerned about. They love this person. They see they're on the wrong road. They're on a road to destruction how would you advise them in terms of their their methodology in trying to intervene? Well, yeah, that's that's really good. Uh, I mean, one, I think you got to go with a lot of prayer um, because mm -hmm. somehow God's got to break through to their heart. Mm -hmm. um, because I did have people, like I said, my pastor uh, tried and my wife and others, and I just wasn't listening. Um, but I think... If you go to them, it can't be confrontational as far mm -hmm. as in, in anger. Not that you can't be stern. You need to speak the truth. Um, maybe try to get them to understand how many people are about to be hurt. Because I wasn't thinking about my son. I wasn't thinking about my wife. I was thinking about me. I wasn't thinking about hurting them. Um, I was just so obsessed with me. I didn't think anything beyond me. And the ripple effect of your sin how it hurts so many innocent bystanders, that's pretty hard to deal with at times. And you look and think, oh my goodness, I would have, you know, sin always costs you more than what you want to pay. I was I think, not prepared to pay for everything I had. Wow. Yeah, that's such a good point, Bill. And, um, uh, and everyone's wired differently in how they're going to receive the message of that truth. But you're right. Go after it with prayer, attack with prayer first, that their hearts would be open and that their eyes would be open to seeing what's really going to take place. So um, this is something that um, people listening might be experiencing themselves. They might be having an emotional affair and think it's no big deal. We're just talking. We're just friends, you know, quote unquote friends. But then that friendship leads to the next thing, the next thing. And 
and um, it's kind of like when Harry met Sally, you know, uh, that, that movie, you, you can't really be friends that well with the opposite sex. It's almost impossible. Right. There's usually one that likes the other one more than the other. So it's just understanding that and keeping that accountability when you are around someone of the opposite sex, right? So that nothing happens kind of like with, with Billy Graham. I mean, Todd and I were talking about that the other day. He had such an entourage of accountability. Mm. It kept any of that from happening. And so what would you how would you speak to either men or women that are are going about this in that selfish me yeah. me mode? Um, how, how would they get help uh, with that accountability? I guess is the yeah. Question. Well, one, if if you're having an emotional affair, you're being intimate. That's mm -hmm. why you like it. Now, you may not be saying intimate things like "I love you," but you're connecting. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm talking about. You mm -hmm. are connecting, and that's why yeah. you call her. He calls you. Whatever. And it's just a matter of time until you take it to the next level. And the only way to deal with it is to cut it off. Mm -hmm. You think, well, I want to do that. Well, of course you don't. You want to be intimate. <laughs> That's what's right. wrong. Right. You know, you have to deny yourself and say no. I mean, I know with me, I'm remarried. And my commitment to Janet is I'll never be alone with a woman. And I don't do this because I had an affair. I've learned this because I've had an affair, right? And everybody mm -hmm. out there could have an affair. I'm telling you, the right situation. Yeah, if sure, you don't sure. think you can, you're absolutely being foolish. So I, I never go have uh, lunch, coffee, or a meeting with a woman alone. If they ask me, it's, it's for always, I always feel awkward. I had a station manager, lady said, hey, can we go get lunch and talk about the fundraiser? And I said, no. <laughs> Um, I said, if, if you could bring your assistant, that would be great. Or somebody, I said, I just don't have lunch with, with ladies. That's wise. And because one, I don't want to ever have that connection again. I'm not even allowing myself to go, whoo, man, I think we had a little connection there because, you know, at that point you got to make sure that you go someplace and don't ever go back down that road. But I don't even want to get to that. Mm -hmm. Um, I don't, uh, ever ride with a lady in a car alone. I just. There's no alone time, right? And and Janet knows, uh, you know, I don't ever call a lady to talk for, as a friend, right? I mean, I, I know you, Wendy, and I've known you for a long time. Right, uh, I've never, we've never, never had a conversation on the phone where, hey, just, how's it going? What's no, Todd? That would know? be weird. It, it, it doesn't well, that's because Bill knows about this right here. <laughs> that's true, too. But you just don't do that. Like, I, I just had a, a very close friend of mine die. He's, he's like, was like a brother. Mm -hmm. And I just love his wife. I'm not reaching out to her. Now, Janet and I did during the, uh, the last few weeks of his life. But I made sure when we text, it was Janet, myself, and her. So it was, yes, and yes. a couple of times, she just sent me a text. And she didn't mean anything by it. I don't even think in a million years, right? But what I did is I went back to our text, the group text, and answered her there. And Smart, because, right? and, and again, one, she's grieving and all that kind of stuff. And, and, and I don't think anything was ever meant by it, but I didn't even want to open that door or even look that way. Mm -hmm. And so, and I wanted Janet to feel comfortable that if I was saying something to her, it was out in the open. Mm -hmm. And so I think, you know, one, if, if you have an emotional affair, the only way to get rid of it is to get rid of it. 100%, mm -hmm. it has to stop. And that intimacy, I'm sorry, Todd, <clears throat> now I'll let you ask. That intimacy that you were, you know, going after and longing for, ultimately is the intimacy that you desire with, with, with Christ. Right. Yeah. And when you were going away from him uh, and not reading God's word, then that intimacy severed. And then you were seeking another place for that intimacy, which I think is interesting. But I love the practicality bill of making the decision ahead of time mm -hmm. <clears throat> in certain areas of life so that the devil doesn't have an opportunity to really tempt you into something. You've already made the decision in your mind. You've strengthened your will. You said, no, this is something I don't do. So whether that's uh, in terms of relationships with the opposite sex or other aspects of life, it's yeah. such a wise, practical thing to do. I mean, if it, uh, let's, let's just take like cheating on your taxes, just make a decision ahead of time. No, I don't cheat. I am honest. I have integrity. I love Christ. 
I mean, I'd like where they put my taxes, but it's a decision I've made ahead of time or any other area of life. It might be in like regards in to health and our health, space yeah, like food oh, or that kind of thing. Okay. I know that if I have ice cream every night before bed, I'm going to pay a price at some point. So making a decision ahead of time. Price. I love the practicality on that. And especially in the area that you're talking about. Hey, listen, I want to talk, uh, just shift a little bit over to the restoration, the restoration yes. journey. Because uh, you mentioned there was an eight-month period there where you're, I'm guessing, pretty miserable because it oh, hadn't yeah. come out yet. So then it did come out. So pick up the story there and tell us what transpired and then what resulted uh, after that period of restoration. Yeah, well, you know, when it all hit the fan, it hits the fan big time, right? Mm -hmm. And, uh, and you know, and, and for me, it was real embarrassing because it's all out in public. It's not even a private thing because I was a public figure. And so, you know, you're sort of just laying low, licking your wounds, thinking, wow, this is uh, pretty rough. And it was pretty cool because I had a, a few people call and say they wanted to walk with me. Not many, but that's okay. You don't need many. You really only need one or two people that will hop in uh, your life and begin to walk with you. And, uh, and I'll never forget, I had uh, a guy by the name of Dr. Tim Clinton uh, call me. He runs the American Association of Christian Counselors. And he says, you need to come to Virginia and let me begin a restoration process with you. He said, I do this with leaders. And uh, I thought, whatever. And so I just got my truck, drove to Virginia. And I'll never forget sitting in a coffee shop in front of him. And he looked at me and goes, I would hire you today. And I said, you are full of it. <laughs> I just remember telling him that. I didn't know him very well, but I thought this is just total religious BS. And uh, he says, no, he says, you've been through the fire. And he says, I know it's still raw, but he says, I know where you've been. And I like walking with guys and working with guys that have been through the fire. I already know you've been through it. And he says, you can be restored. And believe it or not, I think it was six months or maybe eight months later, he hired me uh, to work on a division in, in the youth area of his ministry. And I, I think I worked with him for a year, year and a half. Uh, so it wasn't just, he wasn't full of it. He really meant it. And that, so that meant a lot to me that somebody still believed in me. Uh, and then I went back to work for you, Todd. I took, I think, eight months off, if I'm not mistaken, something like that. And that was sort of weird going back into radio stations. But um, as far as I know, almost every radio station welcomed me back. May not be a hundred percent, but it was pretty close. And I never forget one station manager called me and he goes, I want you back at my event. I was like, really? He goes, I want to be part of the solution. Mm. And I thought that is so cool. Cause so often when somebody falls, you look at him and you think, what an idiot. Why would he be so stupid to do that? Well, it has nothing to do with stupidity. He's hurting or she's hurting, and they're deceived. Mm -hmm. And usually, well, not usually, always, when you process things through hurt, it comes out very distorted. Hmm. And I was processing a lot of different things uh, in hurt in my life that hadn't been dealt with. And things were just coming out very distorted. Yeah. And so, you know, it wasn't that I was an idiot or stupid. It's just, man, I'd lost my way, surrendered mm -hmm. myself over to Satan. And, and do you I think you almost uh, deserved it? To, yeah, to yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. I mean, what I did, but it just, it's healing when somebody says, I want to be part of the solution. I mean, yeah. you read in uh, Galatians, <clears throat> it talks about when somebody falls, you're to gently pick them up. Well, the church doesn't do that often. Mm -hmm. We just nail them into the ground and walk away <laughs> thinking, what an idiot. Mm -hmm. And we totally miss it. And the, the latter part of that verse says, you know, you could be the same guy, the same gal, and you could be. And I, there's times in my life I've looked at people going, how stupid are they to sin like that? Well, you know, they weren't stupid at all. They were processing hurt in a very bad way. And you walk alone, you die alone, right? And so um, having somebody say, I want to be part of the solution was the beginning of the healing. And it doesn't happen overnight. It's amazing. It seemed like it was overnight that I made these decisions to have the affair. Mm -hmm. And it has taken well over a decade of restoration. Mm -hmm. And it's still going on today. But you, 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 know, you start at ground zero. Uh, it, but the cool, maybe even below ground zero. I don't know. Um, 
but God was faithful to heal and put people in my life to walk with me. I think and, that's the key. Yeah, I think I, that's the key. And I think that's a lesson for all of us when uh, it is so easy to to judge and walk away because you don't want to get your hands dirty uh, or, or you, you just you just don't want to take the time to deal with it, whatever it might be. But but it's really cool the way that God can arrange circumstances to bring certain people in to walk alongside. And I, I you know, when I went through part of that with you, you know, on, on your board at ZGM and all of that, and it was so very difficult to watch you have to endure the pain and really, and the suffering of the consequences. And we were all grateful that as Christians, uh, since we've been forgiven, <laughs> we we can offer forgiveness and bring about restoration and healing. And I, here's the one thing I that Bill won't say about himself, but you were so um, humbled in that process. Uh, and I mean, you had, you know, like, like a lot of us guys, you get a lot of male ego and arrogance and pride and all that. And God just... He just took you down and the result of that humbling and your willingness to surrender and to go through the proper steps of restoration has now resulted in, I watch Bill, you're constantly reaching out to people who've been hurting, whether they got themselves into trouble because of sin or they lost a loved one and they're just busted up. I've seen God work through you a a much deeper compassion and a relatability that I think is the outcome of restoration. Well, You know, I think after you've had a broken heart, I mean, I'm talking truly just broken, shattered. I had somebody call me once and asked how my heart was, and I'll never forget my reply was, I don't have one. Mm -hmm. There's nothing left. Mm -hmm. And so I think when you experience that and you see people go through hardships, you you feel that pain. Uh, It may not be exact feeling, but you know the level of pain. And so I just, I'm at a point where I reach out to people right away. I saw a guy the other day, it was about a year or so ago. He had said that his daughter had passed away and she was like in her twenties. And I call him and uh, I didn't know him that well, just pretty much through radio, but I just wanted to call and love on him. And I asked if he saw it coming. He goes, well, uh, I think she hung herself. And I had no idea it was suicide. And I, I, you know, I don't know that level of pain. I know a lot of pain, so I just go to where I was. And, uh, and you know, sometimes we feel so awkward. What do we say to people like that? Well, how about I care? Mm. And yes. that's it. Don't, she's not in a better, I mean, she is in a better place, but that's stupid to say because he's hurting. Uh, I just said, dude, I don't know what you're going through. I said, all I can tell you is I care. I can't make it any better for you today. But I said, if you would, I'd love to be able to call you once a week just to see how you're doing and to pray for you and just to be a friend. I said, yeah. if yeah. if you're mad at God and you just need to cuss for 10 minutes, I'll listen to you. <laughs> I'm your guy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm That's your guy. Awesome. I, if That's you just good. need That's somebody good. to take you for a cup of coffee, I'm your guy. You know, I'm not I a love counselor. That about you, I, Bill. Try to fix it. I just wanted, you know, the Bible says weep with those who weep. Yeah. Yes. And so sit down next to a friend and weep with them. You don't yes. have to have the answers. Yeah. yeah. I love so that, that about you, Bill. You you do. You reach mm-hmm. out, you encourage, you're a natural encourager, but you are, are constantly reaching out for people. Mm-hmm. And I think that that is a good message for our listeners to hear too, is don't be afraid to reach out and do just like you said, just say, I care. Mm-hmm. Like you don't have to give them a solution, a, a way to you know make their feelings turn different just, I care and I'm here for you in whatever capacity you need me. And so, um, I just love that about you. All right. Well, I, I have a question here, um, yeah. that, uh, I'm curious about who, cause you, you're just a rock star in what you do. And I've, I love hearing stories from Todd about you guys on the road. Oh, we got the stories. Got Let the me stories. tell you right now. I mean, you guys could write a book. It is hilarious, <laughs> yeah. but I'm just curious, um, who have been the biggest influencers in your life and why? Wow, that's that's really good. Hey, I, hey Bill, this is this is not a setup either, you know. For, for, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Besides Todd, uh, yes. Uh, no, I, you know, I really think, uh, especially over the last decade, I think my wife Janet. Oh. Um, yeah. She She's really has. I mean, she really believes in me and is always pushing me to go further mm-hmm. than I think I can go. You know, uh, you know, I do a, a men's retreat in, in January up in Idaho and, 
usually about November, I'm complaining. I should never have done this. What have I done? And, you know, and she'll take me aside. She says, you know, it's the right thing. And I know you, you'll book the next year when you're there. Not, and I, yeah, you're right. <laughs> That's so, so good, um, and she's just, ah, man, she's such a godly person. Mm -hmm. um, I see her, you know, really uh, in the word every day. I mean, studying at the table. She's out there about five thirty, six o'clock in the morning. Mm -hmm. And uh, and that really has encouraged me to go deeper with the Lord. Behind and, every good man's an even greater woman. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> true, true. She is a, a great woman, and I'm yes. just uh, honestly trying to measure up <laughs> and, uh, and be a better husband. And that has been a, a work in progress, but she gives me grace and encourages me to grow and, you know, doesn't hurt me too often. Only if it's I awesome. have to get back into cool. yeah whack you know come on back no but I, it really it was it, it would be Janet yeah that's so good man that is that's inspiring mm -hmm. and I think a lot of guys right now would probably agree with you that it's their wives who've been just exceptionally tolerant patient encouraging is that what you would uh, say yes absolutely <laughs> grace grace giving merciful and you. unbelievably patient <laughs> that's that's my reward. Hey, I got one one more question, then we're going to let you go. Um, and uh, maybe, I don't know, maybe you can't answer this, but uh, is there any one thing um, different about you that people don't realize? <laughs> Some little secret you can share about Bill Scott that would be like, wow, Inquiring never, minds want to know. Like, never knew that like about Like, do you him. play the ukulele? I mean, what, what, do, you, what do you got? <laughs> I like to sit in my office late at night playing smooth jazz and drawing art. Oh, really? What? Drawing yeah. art? You're an artist. Oh, yeah. I, lo I love to draw I've, art. I've often I've wondered often. why he travels with the box of coloring crayons. <laughs> 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 Seriously, you draw art. Yes. Well, yeah. that's awesome. I yeah, love doing something. that. I don't know that I ever have shared it with <laughs> anybody in particular, but yeah, I, I love it. That's my, my sort of chill time, quiet yeah. time. That's awesome. Just cool. decompress yeah. and draw art. And so th what kind of art? Uh, specifically stick uh, figures <laughs> that was I like drawn like uh nature and then i love drawing cartoons i'm really good at drawing cartoons oh wow all right That's well you're gonna fun. have to start displaying those get them up there on your social media platforms let's take a look at them pretty soon they'll well, put price tags on them. everybody be standing in a line and wanting to buy <laughs> them and just like, uh, you can use them for a fundraiser man that's there we go. That, right those, those cartoon uh caricatures yeah. things that people that's love. right yeah <laughs> Well, very good, Bill. Well, we thank you so much for being on the show and sharing your story because I know it's not uh, always easy to share something like this, but I know it's been a lot of years and the fact that God has healed and restored you mm -hmm. and now you are ministering to so many because of what you've been through. I know this podcast will will bless uh, a lot that are listening. Yeah. So thank you All so very time. much. And uh, we will we'll talk to you really soon, but thanks for being on the show. Thank you, Bill. Thank you. Love you, man. All right. Take All care. Right. All right. That was super awesome. Loved yeah. the show. And, you know, just his authenticity and um, just being so raw. Yeah. You know, that's refreshing because mm -hmm. it's, again, it's not the easiest thing to do. And, um, and again, I had firsthand experience walking with Bill through that many years ago and so many lessons for all of us. We mm -hmm. oftentimes think, the focus goes on the person who has fallen and needs restoration. Mm -hmm. And we forget about that. If we're part of it, that God can do amazing things inside of us. Absolutely. So I guess that's our challenge to you today, that, that if you yourself in a place right now where, where you're caught, you're stuck and you need help, reach out, ask for help, get perspective, get a buddy to walk alongside you. And on the flip side of that, if you know of somebody, you're pretty sure they're in a place that's not good. Ask God to give you the grace and the courage mm -hmm. to go in love, to walk alongside of them. You'd have to confront them. As Bill said, you can do it in a loving way, sharing concern for what lies ahead for them. And it just might be that, you know, God will cause them to listen to you. Yeah. And just to be faithfully committed uh, mm. to their restoration. Yeah. I yeah. think that's a oh, beautiful yeah. ministry right there. Mm. And uh, we all need grace and, and none of us are immune. Like Bill said, yeah. the temptation is there for all of us. So we need to uh, remain in community and have that accountability and those people that walk with us through the process of, of whatever we need yeah. restoration. Yeah. in. so thank you all so much for tuning in to your biggest breakthrough. Hope this blessed you. And, uh, and so, share it with somebody that share you know, it. just Absolutely. send it along and say, Hey, take a listen. You might like this. Yeah. All right. We'll catch you on the next one.